What's up guys, Theris Cousin here. Welcome to the last use transition tutorial video you're ever going to have to watch. I promise you, if you watch this video and you watch it until the end, you're never going to have to watch another video on this ever again. All right, cool. Let's begin and let's talk about use transition. So here in front of us, we have a very simple application as usual, right? You have an application with three tabs. You have about, posts, and contact. And in here, there is a problem that is going to be very apparent soon that we can solve with use transition. And that problem problem is going to be in the posts tab. First, let's go to the contact tab and tap this. And if we do, you're going to see that we see some contact information here. There was no problem. We can go back to the about tab. Everything works super smoothly. But as soon as we tap the post tab, nothing happens, at least for a while, right? It takes a little bit of time and then we have all of the posts. And if you can see here, we have a lot of posts. Actually, if I just scroll down to the very bottom, we have 2,500 posts. That's a lot of posts to render on a single page. Now, usually in a real application, if I can just scroll back up here, you're gonna see that, man, this is a lot of posts, right? You're not often going to run into this kind of situation. Like how often do you build an application where you have to show 2,500 posts initially on the first render? Usually, it doesn't always happen like this. What you usually do is you use pagination, you fetch maybe the first 20 posts, and then as the user scrolls down, you fetch more and more posts, right? That's going to make rendering this entire page a lot faster because you're only showing the first 20 posts. But there are some situations where you actually can't do this and you have to render an insane amount of data on the first render. And in those situations is where you would use something like use transition. So now let's look at the code for this. So this is the code that's running this entire application. This is the main component here. We have here our three tab buttons, right? We have about, posts, and contact. Each of them will set the selected tab, which is a state variable that is held here at the top level through this function here, select tab, which literally just sets the tab to the current tab. And then at the bottom here, based on the selected tab, we render either the about tab, the post tab, or the contact tab. The tab button component is a very simple component. It just renders out the main button component from component slash UI. We're going to revisit this later. The other components, for example, the about tab, literally it just renders out a paragraph, so there's nothing there. And then we have this post tab component, which does our artificial slowing down. If you look here, we have this loop that runs 2,500 times. For each time, it will render out the slow post component. The slow post component is right here. It'll just do nothing for one millisecond, and this is what results to our post tab being so slow. Now here's the actual problem, because like I said, rendering out all of these posts sometimes is inevitable, and that's not the problem in this video. The problem was not really obvious, and it happens when I go to click about, and then I try to click posts again, but before posts get successfully rendered with all of the posts, I try to click contact. You're going to see that I'm not able to click contact until posts has finished rendering. So I'm here now in about, I'll click posts, and then click contact before I did, and nothing happened, only after posts has finished rendering, do we then immediately skip to contact. If I do this now again, I'll click posts and I'll click about. I clicked about, nothing happens until post has finished rendering and then my UI is gonna show me some stuff. And then we completely skip over posts and we go directly to about. One more time, click posts, click contact, and then nothing happens until posts renders and then we immediately go into contact. This obviously is a bad user experience. What essentially is happening here is that this post rendering is freezing the entire UI until it's finished rendering, and then the UI will catch up with the most up-to-date status. In this case, it's the about page. I do it again. In this case, it's the contact page, right? It's delaying the entire rendering of the UI until it can finish rendering. So this is obviously bad and you want to avoid this. And the way that you avoid this is you use the hook called use transition. If I go back to the code here, use transition is a hook that is going to tell React that some transitions, some updates in the UI are non-priority, which means that they're not as important as some others and that if the situation needs them to be, they can be interrupted to prioritize the updates that actually have priority. So in our case, if I go back now to the app, what should have priority when I click post and then click about, the clicking of about should have priority because that is my most up-to-date intent. The last click that I did was on about, which means that the page that I want to see is about and I no longer care about posts. But because of the way that we currently set up our app, posts will block the entire UI 
and not allow me to go to contact in this case until it finished rendering, which is bad. I want as a user to go directly to contact or about or whatever is my latest update and not care about posts because that is my up-to-date priority. So that's where the use transition hook comes into play. We're going to use it to interrupt the rendering of the post so that we can go to about or contact or any other update and skip rendering posts if we no longer care about it. And you're gonna see the way that we do this is really, really simple. So first we're gonna come up here and import use transition from React. So use transition from React. And then we're gonna create here our use transition hook. So we'll do const is pending and then start transition. I'm gonna let Copilot complete almost everything for me. This is the syntax of use transition. It's always going to return to you two things, is pending and start transition, which is very similar to, as you can see here, use state. Then all we have to do is where we are making the update, in this case, set tab here, we just have to wrap this in start transition and that is going to do everything for us. So I'll come here and do start transition and then come here, set tab, and let Copilot do its thing, and then just remove this one. And then I just have to close this parenthesis here and then save. And now if I go back to the code and refresh, just so we have a clean slate, I can click post, I can go to contact, and I immediately see contact and posts has been abandoned. I can do the reverse, I can click post, I can go to about, and about is rendered instantly, and post is discarded. Now this doesn't mean that post is never rendered. If I click post and just do nothing and wait for all the posts to render, all of the posts you're gonna see are fully rendered. That's not what use transition does. Use transition just interrupts if there's something else that should be important. For example, I click contact, I click post, I click about, it's going to discard post and then render the about. Right, so you can see the benefits of using use transition. All we had to do is wrap our state update in start transition and React does everything automatically. Now this will work with any state update, right? The reason why this works here is because we're using set tab, which comes from use state, right? This will not work with some other function that doesn't update state. This is a specific state update optimization because React, as you've seen, does everything automatically. It will only do it for state. But that doesn't mean that we can't do it through props. For example, if I were to come here to tab button and then just copy this piece of state here, this use transition, put it here, come here, paste this here, and then just import it here from React at the top, then copy the select tab function here and come and paste it here in this component. We are going to make some space here and rename this to handle click. And then I'm going to remove this because the parameter is now going to come from the parent. I'm still going to leave start transition, but now I'm just going to make some updates to my props here. So I'll do some destructuring. I'm going to do on click and then dot 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 rest. Instead here, we're gonna pass rest to the button. And then inside of this handle click function, I'm just going to do on click question mark dot and then remove tab. And basically what this means is that I've just accessed this on click property from the button, which actually if I go to the button props here, you're gonna see that there is a function called on click, which is optional, right? So that's why I have the question mark. I'm accessing this function here so that I can wrap it in start transition. Then I have to put the question mark because again, this is optional, so it's not always going to be there. And then I'm just going to pass the rest of the props as we had before to button and then here all we have to do is on click and then just pass handle click. What I've essentially done here is the same thing that I had before with the only difference that I now moved the use transition hook inside of this tab button. Then if I go back to the parent here, I can get rid of this use transition here. I can get rid of this start transition here, get rid of this and then save this as so. This is initially as we had it before. And now the transition is going to happen inside of the tab button. And you're going to see that now our app works exactly in the same way. I can go to contact, I can go to about, I can go to posts, it's going to wait a bit to render the post just like before, or I can go to contact, I can click posts and then go to about and it's still going to interrupt the render. Right, so start transition will work with any function that updates the state, even if it comes from the parent, even if it's updating the state of a parent. The only requirement is that you have a function that updates the state so that then React can do all of its magic behind the scenes and do everything for you automatically. Now, one more benefit of doing it this way is that now we can use this is pending boolean value. If you've seen here, we haven't used is pending at all. Use pending is a value that will tell you when there's a transition in progress. So we can use this now in this tab button to render something else if the transition is currently loading. So what I can do is I can come here and I can say if is pending, I can just return maybe just a paragraph that says loading. Then I have to add here because I forgot to return. 
And now if I go back to my application and I refresh just so I have a fresh start, whenever I click post, it's going to say loading because there's a transition happening and then it's going to render all of the posts. This is great if you want to show something to the user as a transition is happening. It's always a better user experience to show that something is happening instead of having the user wait for a couple of seconds with nothing. They'll think that the app is broken. This is the power of use transition. It's not a hook that you're going to use all of the time in every single component, but when you do have to use it, it makes it really useful so that you can defer some updates and prioritize others to provide your users with a much better user experience when, for example, you have no other choice but to render 2,500 posts in a single page. Cool, so there you go. That was the tutorial on use transition. I told you, after this, you're not going to have to watch another video on use transition ever again. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to click subscribe right here. It would really help me out a lot. There's a video here that you can watch. I'm sure it's super awesome because it's made for me. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.